Hi, I'm Martin Heine and I run a music studio in Berlin, Germany. In the context of that, I find myself answering some recurring questions and discussing certain production techniques on a regular basis. Because of that, I've decided to start this short video series in order to address some of those questions uh, for my clients as well as anyone else who might benefit from it. Uh, today's subject is inspired by viewer Astral Audio, who asks, Why is AB recommended with Omni Capsules? I've been focusing on using cardioids because of the risky rooms with low ceilings, etc. Thanks. So his question is, why is the AB stereo technique, also known as the spaced pair, so often done with microphones with an omnidirectional pickup pattern, as opposed to other pickup patterns such as cardioid, for example? I believe that the answer is not so much that you must use omnis when you do AB, but rather that you want to use omnis in the first place and therefore you have to do AB. Let me explain. The relevant distinction of these microphones lies not in the pickup pattern, but in the way they operate, which sets them apart from any other type of microphone. A true Omni microphone, like this KM183 here, is a pressure microphone, whereas cardioids, wide cardioids, super cardioids, figure of eights, etc. are all pressure gradient microphones. They are built and work very differently. The pickup pattern of a microphone is one thing, but the physical operating principle is another, although related. And omni or pressure microphones like these have some amazing and extremely useful properties that other microphones simply do not. So let's find out what a pressure microphone is, how it works, and let's call it a pressure microphone rather than an omni to avoid any confusion. A pressure microphone is basically just like a little pot with a skin across its opening. Now, sound waves in the air are changes of the speed and the pressure of air molecules. So if the pressure is higher outside of the pot, the skin gets bent inwards. If the pressure is lower outside, the skin or membrane, as you'd call it in a microphone, would be pushed outwards. Like with other microphones, the mechanical movement of the membrane is then converted to an analogous current that is amplified and eventually drives a corresponding speaker membrane which recreates the same changes in air pressure and makes the signal audible again, basically. The part where you translate the mechanical movement of the membrane into an electrical current doesn't concern us so much here. It's more about the little pot and the membrane, as that is the unique feature of a pressure microphone. Actually, what I'm describing here is really a barometer simply an instrument that is sensitive to the changes in air pressure. In fact, in order to make a pressure microphone usable, the pot needs to have a tiny little hole that allows the pressure to equalize on the inside and the outside. Uh, the size of this hole will decide how low in frequency the microphone will correctly go. I suppose in a sense you could say the base octaves are the small octave, the great octave, the contra octave, the sub contra octave and the weather forecast. This brings us to the most important superpower of the pressure microphone. It correctly translates even the lowest bass frequencies and that regardless of distance. This is a very significant feature because none of the other types of microphones can do this. If you've done any recording at all, you'll have come across something called the proximity effect, which is the plague of all pressure gradient microphones and which basically means that low frequencies are very exaggerated at a close range, but lost at a distance. There is unfortunately no distance at which pressure gradient microphones can record bass with a flat frequency response. Only pressure microphones will get you an accurate recording down to 20 Hz, which is relevant, for example, for the basses in an orchestra. Um, as a side note to our American colleagues, we, we like to use a fifth lower string on our double basses over here. But also for harp, tuba, contrabassoon, grand piano, pressure microphones can be very interesting. In addition to the extended frequency response and contrary to pressure gradient microphones, the distance to the source does not matter for the low end. This means that you can capture a church organ's mega low pipes that are often located very high up in a room, but you can also slap a pressure microphone right on the grill of an amplifier and not have it colored by proximity effect. Most importantly though, if you wish to capture a large full range ensemble there is no alternative to the pressure transducer. Any other type of microphone will mean that the low end will be lacking to the extent of being unusable. Unfortunately, this is one of the mistakes that just does not seem to be going away anytime soon. So how can we would use any other type of microphone if we have this magic potion? Wouldn't this be the only thing we'd ever need? 
unfortunately not. Pressure microphones have other properties that may or may not be good in a given situation. Let's look at them. Since the capsule is sensitive to changes in air pressure, it makes no distinction as to where the sound is coming from. Uh, whatever changes in pressure happen to come by this capsule will be registered. That makes the picker pattern of such a microphone necessarily omnidirectional. Sorry if I'm sweating, by the way. It is 34 degrees in Berlin today. Um, so if you want some directionality out of your microphone, you must use a pressure gradient microphone. I will make a different video about that type of microphone in the future, but uh, a word of warning already now. If you have a switchable microphone, like a multi-pattern microphone, like an 87, which is basically two cardioid capsules back to back, and you switch that to Omni, it will not give you the same thing as a true pressure microphone. Um, because are, those are still pressure gradient capsules. It will have the pickup pattern of an Omni, but not the behavior of a pressure microphone. The proximity effect will decrease, but it will never go away completely. Now, there are some microphones that you can mechanically switch to Omni, and they become true pressure microphones. And um, I've also recently had a file delivery with a Josephson C700, I think, which is a microphone that has some true pressure capsules inside of the same grill with pressure gradient capsules so you can do some switching and choosing of signals there but these are outliers generally when you have a multi-pattern microphone and you set that to omni it will not give you pressure microphone behavior one more important uh, effect to consider with omnis is pressure buildup in front of the capsule if you've ever stood in the back of a club at a show you may have noticed that the bass level increases as you get closer to the back wall that's because the sound energy gets reflected by the back wall and then layers with the incoming energy and the buildup occurs. And something similar happens in the front of these microphones, but only for very high frequencies, as mid and low frequencies just bend around the capsule, but high frequencies get reflected and there is a quite significant um, buildup of high frequency energy right in front of the capsule. The frequency with the strongest buildup is connected to the size of the capsule. And that is the reason why measurement microphones like this have a very small capsule to move this distortion upwards and outside the area of interest. But it also means that they are much less sensitive. Commonly, a good middle ground for the membrane size is what such a Neumann microphone would have. Uh, this gives us 8 dB, a bump of 8 dB at around 10 kilohertz and then gradually comes down and is flat from around 2 kilohertz. This is of course a considerable overemphasis of the high frequency content and that is why many companies offer different Omni microphones with varying degrees of equalization of this pressure buildup. The idea being that if you are closer to the source you're going to be needing a flatter more equalized response in the highs on axis but uh, the surrounding sounds will as a result be a little muted. This is called free field equalized. However, if you're recording from a great distance, the loss of highs from the further distance means that the overemphasis on axis is now a welcome feature. It creates some directionality and reach. And in that case, without any further equalization, the surrounding sounds will be recorded flat. Uh, this is called diffuse field equalized. Sherps make at least four versions of their classic uh, Omni capsule, the MK2 that I know of. The MK2, MK2H, MK2S, MK2XS, and there may be more. But this allows the user to fine tune this issue gradually. Sometimes when close miking, you can circumvent the issue of the pressure buildup entirely by pointing the mic at an angle to the source. For example, if you're recording an amplifier that plays like this, you can just uh, point the mic upwards at the ceiling and uh, any reflections coming from there, where the pressure buildup would occur, will be so insignificant in level to the amplifier that's right next to the microphone uh, that they will not be heard, but the amplifier will be recorded ruler flat. So in conclusion, and to get back to Astral Audio and his question why you should use Omnis in AB, I think it's really the pressure microphone that you want to use for its special properties. And once you've established that, it's by nature of the design of that type of microphone that it is necessarily Omni. And since that is the case, you're not going to be having much fun trying to create a stereo image with the two microphones together, and that's why you space them out. This is, in my estimation, the reason why the AB microphone technique goes hand-in-hand -hand with omnidirectional microphones. If there is no low end to worry about, 
By all means, use any other mic for the AB microphone technique. But if full range is what's required, then the magical properties of the pressure transducer are what's called for. And to end this, I would like to mention one other amazingly useful instrument that uses the same brilliant physical operating principle as the pressure transducer. And that is, of course, our ears. If you have any additional questions or experiences to share, please do so in the comments. Also feel free to forward this video to your recording friends and subscribe here if you wish to be notified about future episodes. Thanks very much. Goodbye.